Hey there, everybody. It's your girl, Barbie J here with a recap review of Tyler Perry's comedy drama, The Oval, season five, episode five, something to hide. Yeah, people had stuff to hide. There was a lot of hiding going on up in here. There was hiding going on in the White House. There was hiding going on in the bunker. There was hiding going on at the Rakadushi's house. There was hiding going on in the pr in the prison. You know, it, so it was a lot going on. So let's just get with how it started. But first, if you haven't subscribed to my channel as of yet, please take a moment right now. Hit that subscribe button, then hit the notification bell and select all. It will let you know every time Barbie J uploads some new content to this channel. Okay, then I ask that you give me that thumbs up like button, hit that, write a comment and share because sharing is caring. So, of course, we all was wondering how Hunter was going to get out of this doggone mess that he was in in that room. And you saw how he got out, right? I mean, Hunter, Lord Jesus, how Eli was going to get out of that room. He had the nerve to hide under the blanket and try not to move like nobody saw him moving up in there. <laughs> like kids do when they playing hide go seek. They giggling under the cover and you see it moving, acting like you can't find them. You know what I mean? And anyway, so Victoria gets up there. She stops Hunter. Hunter was weak. That's the only thing that saved him because he was still weak and out of it. And thank God uh, Eli had put all his clothes together on the chair. But my thing is, how did Hunter get up those steps past the Secret Service without them seeing him? They had to see him come and walk on by. And then we have, um, so anyway, Victoria sits on, on, <laughs> on Hunter because he falls down kind of. She tells the other guy, Eli, to grab his stuff and get out of there. And he goes out there. So he had to change in the hallway. But that's right. Victoria had the cameras cut off so nobody would know he was up there. And then he come down those steps to, the, you know, act like nothing went down. I was waiting for something to be on backwards or uh, unbuttoned or his <laughs> shoes on the wrong foot. I was waiting to see something crazy. But he came down in one piece. And Hunter's up there talking about, what? who was that in my bed? Who was that? I know it was Sam, that little runt. I'm going to make his life a living hell. I said, now, Victoria might keep that going. Sam better watch out because Victoria just might keep that one going for him. You know, but it, we know it wasn't him. But like she said, what do you care? He had that hooker in the bed. He didn't care. She got killed, remember? Jason sliced her head off in that bed. So what do you care? I was with Victoria. Like, what do you care? So now we at the prison. And Alan is fighting for his life with this guy. And those detective or Secret Service people come in there and they save him. But the lady order instantly handcuffs Alan. I don't know why behind his back. And the other guy, he holds the, the guy in his um in a choke hole. And I'm sitting there going, he's telling him, relax, relax. And I'm just like. For a minute, I was like, maybe they did send those, that guy in there. But I really don't think they did. But I could tell you what I didn't see. I didn't see anybody pick up that damn knife. So where's that knife at? And the guy is mad because now he didn't get to stab, Um, you know, he didn't get to kill Alan. And I think those drug dealers or whoever got his family. So I don't know what's going to happen to him. But oh, well, but they left him in that jail cell. So then they tried to talk to Alan, but Alan wasn't trying to tell anything. Because at first Alan was like, oh, thank God they saved me. But then Alan was like, oh, y'all came in here just in time. I was calling for the security. But yeah, y'all just happened to come in just in time. Y'all set this up. Y'all set it all in time. That was your guy. What am I thinking? Because they like, what happened in there? What was going on? And he was like, what's going on is y'all didn't give me my phone call. If I had my phone call, I might not have been in still in that cell or whatever it is. And he just wanted his call and they want to take him somewhere because who wants to talk to him is not um, able to come to the prison. And they keep telling him they could help him. He needs to come with them. And I'm sitting there going, why does he need to come with them? Why can't they tell him stuff? And then they go, well, we'll just put you back in the cell. Why can't you put him in another cell? Why do you have to put him back in that cell? So stop playing. You know what? Now that I think about it, 
maybe they did set that up to scare Alan. I'm with him right now. Anyhow, back at the White House, Max comes over to re um replace the guy that was next to Bobby. And Max is always just an ass. I don't know. I just don't like the way he acts. Why couldn't he just say Bobby, the uh, president got up and da-da-da-da? No. He's got to stand there and let Bobby get all riled up like, what are you doing here? Why aren't you back over there? And every time Bobby talk about going back over there, Max knows he got shot. He going to hit him in the chest, hit him and keep touching him where he got, where he's hurt and stuff. And I say, like, stop doing that, Max. It drives me crazy. So he finally just tells, he, he tells um Bobby what happened and how the president just got up. Hunter got up like it was like he just had a bad headache and everything and said he probably took the elevator upstairs. That's all he had to do. But what gets me is how Eli comes down the steps and looks at them and say he's ready to go. But um, how come he isn't realizing that Max is standing there when he should be at the infirmary uh, watching Hunter? How come Eli didn't say, what are you doing here? Max, I thought I put you over there by the infirmary to watch Hunter, but he didn't say that, which means put it together, guys. He knows that Hunter got up and that Hunter went upstairs. Hello. Hello. So now at the Rakaduchi camp, River takes uh, Jason into the men's trailer to show him where he could sleep and get some rest. I don't think I could sleep and get some rest in there with all that booty showing. Every man in every bunk is naked. Booty and ding-dongs are everywhere. And I, I'm surprised Jason ain't trying to run. Jason's like, I really don't need to spend the night. <laughs> I was with Jason. But he's like, it'll be fine. And River's asking him to help him get undressed. Come on, River. You've been getting out of that gown by yourself all this time. Stop trying to hit on him. Jason is not gay. Okay. So, you know, they sit there talking and, you know, Jason starts sharing a little bit, saying how his parents hate him and they wish he was never born. And River said his parents hate him and they threw him out. Then Jason told a little bit about his parents and he told River, I guess we got a lot of common or something like, oh, we're not that much different. Something like that, he said. He mentioned that he had servants or something like that. So River's like, oh, you rich? Oh, the highest is going to like you. He's like, I'm not rich. My parents are rich. And that's just the way it's supposed to be. And he's like, oh, I heard that before, you know, and, and you know, but he's still going to like you. And then he's like, you sure you don't want to sleep with me in the bed with me? River's trying to get Jason to sleep in the bed with him. I'm like, Jason is not gay. Anyway, he said, I'm good. And they went to bed. Now we at Rich's house, and I told y'all, I said, since uh, Nancy going to be over there with Priscilla, might as well have Sam over there with Richard. And he's helping him in, and he tells him what happened, how Priscilla had these guys beat him up. He didn't know how many of them it was and stuff. And Richard said, at least your face looked nice. I mean, look, is okay. And he said, get this. She told them not to hit me in the face. <laughs> I don't know why. So he's telling Sam he need to go to the hospital and get checked out. Sam said he's fine. He'd been in combat before. And Rich is like, that was back in your 20s and stuff. So Sam is like, just get me some whiskey or something. And uh, Rich is like, I need some too. So when he comes back, Sam want to know why he needs uh, some whiskey. And he tells him, uh, Nancy told me some stuff that I don't think I'll ever get over. But then yet he asks Sam what happened with Priscilla. And he tells him what it was, what he did to Bobby with the rubber bullets and stuff like that. You know, and he's telling him he need to stop doing that, you know, and let that go or whatever advice he's giving. But then again, Sam is trying to ask him, what is it that happened with Nancy? And he doesn't tell him. What he does is end up um, mentioning how he had to go identify a body because he still can't find Barry. That's what he um switched the subject to. And then that's when Sam told him he was surprised that they, the White House didn't call him yet because the president OD'd and that they sworn in the vice president. So now we see Dale over at Alan's apartment looking for that little black tin can and he finds it. 
and he takes out a bunch of flash drives and put them in his pocket. His phone rings. He shuts it off, put it back in his, that in his pocket. And he sits on the couch with the tin can sitting in front of him. I don't know if he's waiting for a call or what's going on now, but I know one thing he's getting himself mixed up into some stuff that he don't need to be in. I don't know why he feels he has to do this because Alan was really funky with him and not the nicest towards him. Anyhow, Back at the, um, I don't know if this is the White House or whatever, but it's Max and Bobby. I guess they working out together and they start talking and they start talking and figuring out that Eli is not the nice guy that they thought he was and that they haven't seen the first lady lately and stuff and what's going on. So basically they derive a plan to try to find out if they can find out some information about where's the first lady. Because they they saw her go into the White House. She was in there, but they never saw her come out. So that's that little banter. I, I get too sick of the, those two when they talk. And Max works my nerve. I told y'all. So anyway, now we see Simone in the bunker. And she's calling the agent. I don't know why he told her his name is Agent. That is not his damn name. And I find that to be very rude. Because she is the second lady. And the respect that he's given her is none. It's not even a visible anywhere. It's, it's null and void. Where's the respect? You're going to tell her your name is damn agent. And she's going, agent, agent. That's all she keep calling him. This sounds so stupid. So she's telling him, my husband must be uh, worried sick about me. And he said, yeah, she, he might be or something like that. She's letting him know that she, he's got to let, this is not right. You're not, you got to let me out of here. He's got strict orders to stay there. And she's like, don't you have to go to the bathroom or anything? What do you got on a pamper, a diaper or something? How could you be just sit here staring at me? He's like, it was strict orders. He said, ma'am, you're facing some serious charges. You assaulted the first lady. Well, I'm, she the second lady. So... They assaulted each other. And she's like, she wouldn't dare. And I'm sitting there going, you know Victoria would. He said, yes, she would. And and I know it. And she was like, no food, no nothing. He said, breakfast going to be brought down. And, you know, and I'm just like, this makes no sense. How is he sitting there? She hasn't gone to the bathroom. And he hasn't gone to the bathroom. So something ain't right. Now we have Richard calling uh, Priscilla to check on Nancy and She's like, okay, she's here and stuff, you know. But what's going on? You want to tell me what this is all about? He said, you know what it's about. It's about Pinky. And she's like, oh, Richard. And he said, no, Priscilla, she told me everything. She lied to me. She said it was one time. It was an ongoing affair and that he broke it off. He said he broke it off. He never said that um, my father broke it off. He didn't mention that. And she was like, oh, but come on. She's under the influence. He said, nah. That stuff she's on. She said, what did she take? What was it? He said, because it makes her tell the truth. He, she said, what is it? He said, it's called devil's breath. And she's like, oh, okay. But then she said something like she was going to drop um, Nancy off at his house. Afterward, he's like, no, no, can't you? You got to watch her. Can't she stay there? You have to watch her. She said, well, I have to go to work. He said, I have to go to work too. And she said, well, you know, I mean, you know, I can't just be taking no day off. He says she needs to be watched. And he's getting upset with Priscilla like it's her responsibility. And then he tells her that she tried to kill herself. And that's how she ended up in the hospital. I said he should have told her that in the first place when he picked her up. Told her she needs to be watched. She has to be monitored and stuff. And Priscilla's like, oh, my gosh, I see. But she was saying, I'll call Miss Jody. Miss Jody will come over and watch. He said, no, nah, no, nah, because then she'll tell Miss Jody everything. <laughs> and you don't want to tell Miss Jody nothing, that's for sure. <laughs> so he got mad at her, but I don't know. I think he said, bring her, go ahead. You could bring her to the house, and he'll get his cousin or somebody like that to watch Nancy. But I do understand Richard. I, I, I feel his pain. He's like, I just can't face her right now. I can't even look at her. That's hard to do, man. That is hard to find out that your spouse had been having an affair with your your father. I want to see if they're going to bring his father into the show and have him tell off his father. You stuck with the wife with this stuff, but what about your daddy? You need to be a man and step to your daddy. He was the senior in this affair, starting an affair with your wife. I'm sure she didn't start it. I'm sure he started it and she got hooked. That's probably what happened.
But now Priscilla's going up there to check on Nancy. I hope ain't nothing ha happening now to her because Priscilla probably ain't checked on her all this time. Richard should have been told her that Nancy tried to hang herself and to watch her when you bring her home. But he didn't do that. See, he not thinking, really. So now we at the VP's residence and Eli comes out and Max and Bobby are standing there. And they start questioning <laughs> Eli. Max is asking, will your wife be joining us? And he's like, why would you ask that? And he says, because sometimes she comes with us. He said, oh, no, she's away. And then Bobby goes, and where did, did you say again she went? And he was like, what? And, you know, you're out of line for questioning me like that. And, you know, they were asking a certain questions and they admitted. They said, yes, we're, we're sorry. It'll never happen again. But then Max goes, I, I was just telling Bobby about we shouldn't do that. Or should He said, oh, so y'all discuss it and talk about it. And he's like, only in a, a professional manner. It's only in professional. He said, yeah, we'll leave it that way. You know, Eli's getting a little snippy and stuff. And I said, these two are idiots, the way they question him. But then when Max starts with the, yeah, I'll make sure Bobby doesn't do that again. Like he's in in charge of Bobby. You know what I mean? So Eli gets in the car and they drive off. Next, we have Alonzo showing at, at Donald's house. And he's updating him on what he found out about Alan that he got arrested and by DC police. And uh, Donald is getting upset about it. He's calling Alonzo an idiot, whatever. Go find out all the information you can, you know, and Alonzo's apologizing for everything. He this is him. His his dumbness is what triggered all of this to happen with Alan and everything. I'm like, really, really? So Donald tells him to gather information, get Alan out, and make this all go away. Because Alonzo's like, what would you have me to do, sir? Like a little wimpy, wimpy, wimp. Anyway, he walks out of the door, and Kyle walks in. And Donald's like, you got to be kidding me. Why are you here and not at his bedside? And he said, well, we wanted to come and deliver you good news in person. And when he say we, he's looking down at his penis saying we wanted to deliver you good news. And he's like, why aren't you that? His bedside, he said, he got up last night and went upstairs. And they're like, you got to be kidding me. Donald's like, you got to be kidding me. He said, this is great. So now we could get the other one out of the office, you know. And um, But he tells him that he should have let him know last night. Because the longer he's in the Oval, the more time he has to look into files and stuff, which they don't want him to see. But it seems like they're all kind of lovey-dovey and talking to each other in their faces and stuff. And I'm like, what is all of this going on? And then all of a sudden, Donald's phone rang, and it's the press secretary letting him know that they just learned that the president is incapacitated and that the vice president is the sitting president. So Donald's telling them that's not true. And he's on his way into the White House right now to straighten this all out. And then he hangs up and he and Kyle are trying to figure out what they can do. He's like, we got to get that idiot up. And that's not the word he used. He used a-hole. And we got to get him up and get him in front of those cameras as soon as possible. And once again, he tells Kyle, you should have let me know this last night. <laughs> anyway, it ends with... Um, the Rakaduchi camp, we got Jason there and he's sitting at the table and what's that other one's name? God, I forgot his name. He keeps calling Jason thinking it's, um, River. He's like, River, River. And he's not answering. Then River comes up behind him and says, that's not me. That's why he's not answering. Cause he's asking him, why is he dressed like that? And why is he ignoring him? And he's calling him boy or whatever. The, the, you know, the dog's going with the curly hair, whatever. So he asks his River, what, why is he here? And he said, Manny found him in the woods. He's like, really? He said, well, what does he want? River goes, I don't know. And you know, good and well, Jason, well, he calls himself Mike, said he just wanted to make a phone call or he just wanted to leave. He didn't want to come there. Manny made him come there with a gun. So why are you looking at him saying, you don't know what he's there for? He don't want to be there. And you know it. So that was just weird. So he walks over and grabs Jason's shoulder and he turns around and he goes, you, what are you doing here? 
And Jason says, what do you mean? And he says, you're the president's son. And it went off like that. So y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode. It was, ah, you know, to me, that's all it was, was, ah, it was okay. Nothing big or great to talk about. Y'all put your comments down in the comment section. Let me know what you thought about this episode. And I will see you all in the next video. Please do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Subscribe, like comment and share because why sharing is caring peace